This season, Texas Tech is switching to all mobile ticketing. That's right. Season tickets, mini plans, and single game tickets for all Texas Tech football, men's basketball, women's basketball, and baseball events are now mobile. So what does this mean for you? Convenience. Because your tickets will be stored on your mobile device, you no longer need to worry about receiving or printing physical copies of your tickets. This new process eliminates the need to coordinate meeting times for ticket distribution by allowing you the flexibility of easily transferring your tickets from your mobile device to the personal device of friends or family. So arriving to the game at different times is no longer a problem. Eliminating the cost of printing physical tickets allows us to put more resources into enhancing both the student athlete and fan experience. Prior to arriving to the stadium on game day, be sure to check your Apple Passbook or Google Pay and confirm tickets have been added. On game days, all you'll need is your phone, your physical parking pass, and of course, that Raider Power Spirit. If you have any questions, feel free to contact support in the Texas Tech Ticket Office at 806-742-TECH or visit texastech.com slash mobile ticketing. It's typical tech. Typical tech. It's a touchdown, Red Raider. Fantastic. Love it and leave it. And they hit on from Love it, Texas. That's pure Texas Tech. Hello and welcome to another edition of Typical Tech. I'm your host, Robert Giovanetti. Hope you are having a great week. And what a great week it is. Students back on campus, getting back to uh, semi-normal here at Texas Tech. Uh, Typical Tech is brought to you by Jay Ferg Pros, a proud partner of Texas Tech Athletics. When it comes to roofing, construction, and plumbing, don't settle for anything but the best. Contact Jay Ferg Pros, the best solution for your home or business. Thank you to all of you who have liked or subscribed uh, to us on the Texas Tech Athletics Podcast channel. Hope that you will uh, continue to do so. We're going to talk a little Texas Tech football today. We're going to have uh, Coach Matt Wells join us. Coach Wells, I think, has been uh, – now this will be his third time, I think, on Typical Tech. So he's leading the way with uh, appearances. We'll have to be like Saturday Night Live and give him a, a robe or something after he hosts – or he, after he's on five times or something like that. We can work on that. But we have a trivia question involving Texas Tech football as we are back to practice – uh, Tyree Wilson, who transferred to Texas Tech from Texas A&M, now has become the third player to transfer to Texas Tech uh, over the offseason from an SEC program. Who are those other two players? We'll tell you uh, those names when we come back after uh, Coach Wells. But as we mentioned, uh, team is back, team is in class, team is practicing, on board, on pace to go play uh, against Houston Baptist on September 12th. So let's check in with Texas Tech head coach, Matt Wells. Coach, uh, getting closer to the start of football, and uh, it's a saying we've been saying, uh, been having around here, right? Just we got to do what we can to get to football, and we're getting closer. You, you feeling it? I am. Uh, you know, it starts to feel a little more real when you start school, right, and you kind of break training camp, and um, our guys are in class, albeit most of them virtual this, this fall. Uh, I don't think anything will be normal. Um, for quite a while. And I hate saying the new normal, but that's, that's the reality. We, we understand there's going to be bumps and hurdles along the way. We said we're going to play and, and do it safely. And I think as coaches and administrators, that's our task is to make sure the safety and the, and the health and well-being of our players are at the forefront of our minds, but also getting ready to play a challenging schedule and, a, and it'll be a challenging season. And so, um, but you're getting more excited because the, you can feel it coming a little bit, and I you actually start into game planning a little bit more. Of course, we we did a lot over the summer and the pandemic, um, and then two of those games get canceled. Um, you know, UTEP and in Arizona, I mean, technically Alabama uh, State. Yeah. So, you know, we're game planning Houston Baptist and looking at the first two opponents while we have extra time right now. And that's very typical at this time of the year. But when you start doing that, it does – you start getting your juices flowing a little bit and you know that um, we're getting real close. Hey, you know, so we released today that you did – and you mentioned this. We were expecting these things. There were some positives from the football program and the last testing. But um, it's not like we didn't expect any any positives. And, and how has that been a challenge for you just as – because, again, you're a routine guy, schedule guy, and you've got to work around these things. And, again – keeping in mind safety, health of our student athletes as well. Yeah, yeah I, I think we – I had talked about it, you know, starting in about May and June, I had started talking about this with our players, uh, certainly with Kirby um, and our staff, but we expected it. I mean, we saw it coming. We were advised by medical staff and the professionals that 
you know, it, it is going to be kind of ebbs and flows. And we knew this and we followed all product protocols and we're learning as we go, but we knew it. I think the big 12 knew it. And um, our, our players know that we're taking all precautions and doing everything right. But we, I am creature habit. I mean, this is a schedule and between coach Scholes and, and Antonio Huffman, my chief of staff and my coordinators, we're changing it a little bit as we go. And we're making sure that we have the right um, uh, situations that we're going through in practice, the right um, intensity, lower intensity, medium intensity, um, who's, who's practicing, who's not, the injured guys. We're managing all those things. And it's uh, certainly a time, Gio, that you gotta, you gotta think outside the box. You, if you stay same, and oh, I've, I've always done it for X amount of years this way, you're gonna be left behind. And I think it's the head coaches and the staffs that can be creative in how you're practicing. And, and um, you take care of the, the kids that are in quarantine you're keeping them healthy. We've had very, very mild symptoms, but and, and all the recovery so far. But then you have healthy players too that I am very much um, in charge of and keeping their um, um, physical um, conditioning at a at a peak and and the skill development at a peak. But you're not overworking them, and so it's a mix. And we have tweaked our practice schedules. It's actually uh, a, a good thing for the fall. And I think we all expected it. The Big 12 expected it, which is why we put two bye weeks in. It's also why the Big 12 championship has a decent chance of maybe moving back a week if we needed another week to play a game because of uh, somebody can, can't play because of a no contest. And so we expected this, and it's, it's good practice, and that's how we're treating it. Our players have been awesome and uh, have really bought into it, and they're going to be fresh and ready for our opener here in uh, less than three weeks. Yeah, I was going to say that. I feel like your team has really uh, been on board with, you know, you see them out, they're wearing the masks, they're they're doing all the things that we're asking them to do, right? They, and again, I guess it just goes to, and it's probably a great example to show you no matter what you do, it, it's still going to, you're still going to be affected by it some in some way. Yeah, we're all affected um, by it. And, um, you know, the, the testing, we have another test tomorrow. We'll continue to test them and, and make sure nothing kind of leaks into our building. Our building has been really good. Our, our medical staff has been great. But I think it's, it's all about adjusting um, as the season goes in, um, in how we practice and your roster management and uh, adding guys to it and guys coming on and off. And I've had a couple of calls this week with a couple um, friends, professional friends, uh, general managers in the NFL, and just talking about, rosters and, and additions and subtractions and, you know, IRs. And so some of that, I think, is similar to, to COVID quarantine and uh, how they manage practice um, uh, schedules and rosters. And it's been really – I think it's been fun for me and it's a, been a challenge. And I do think we have got to adjust and you've got to kind of weave your way through this or a, a program or a staff's going to get left behind you. So you've really got to, I think – Follow the protocols, learn as you go, but we 100% expected this. Um, but it, you get in the thick of it, and you're like, okay, here we go. Let's make sure that we're able to, to overcome chaos and havoc. And what happens, Gio, if some of our guys or some of the opponents test positive real close to a game time, and, and you do have a, a game, but you're down a few guys, and you've got to be emotionally a little bit stable and do our best to be emotionally mature talking about a lot of things with our young kids or our young players. I, these guys have been great. Um, and I respect them for it. They want to play. They want to play in a safe way. And it's our job to provide that. Yeah. I think, again, you hear the, the message from the, the student athletes is they want to play. We've seen in other conferences, we're not going to play. And so it does kind of, it, it makes it, I mean, I don't think we've ever seen anything like it. And I know you probably, you guys coach and teach and everything about prepare for everything right but it it's this is a great life lesson too isn't it it's very 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 lifelike sports college athletics i think prepares in every sport these young men and young women um for life unexpected um you've got to take care of your family you got to take care of your own health and well-being you got to be a great teammate uh, in the work environment a great teammate in your family um, you've got to provide you've got to be accountable um, things are going to come at us that we didn't expect. 
and you can't control it. And so you, you got to control your, your attitude and your effort every single day. And that sounds so simple, yet it's so hard to do. And I think if we all focus on that, we're better men, we're better women, we're better athletes, better teammates, better Red Raiders every single day. And I think it absolutely prepares you for life. Uh, speaking of the schedule, you mentioned the changes. Um, and so now we open with Houston Baptist. But really, when you look at the conference schedule, I thought from a Texas Tech perspective, hey, this worked out not bad. I, I like the way the schedule lays out for us at Texas Tech. You got a big one right out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, that is a big one. But, I mean, did you look at it? Does it matter to you? You got, you got to play them all anyway. And, I mean, the way the buys come in and the way everything works out, did, did, were you overall happy with the way the I mean, to say that I didn't look at it, I mean, every coach is completely lying when they say they don't look at the schedule. I don't think I, I – I not focus on it, but I don't think I just sit there and dwell on the schedule. But certainly you look at it and, you know – I think there's some some good things to it with um, how we're coming off bye weeks and but Geo to think that the schedule is going to stay exactly that way we're up in the night we're not I don't I don't I don't foresee that and um, we're ready for changes and we'll handle them in the right way professionally and emotionally as as stable as we can whether a, a a team that we're playing can't play us and we need to take a bye weekend and move the game. Or maybe it's us that has a no contest and we have too many in quarantine. we got to handle it the right way and, and move on. And maybe we do get all 10 of them in. We'll see. But I think, you know, I, there hasn't been any dwelling on the schedule. Certainly know that, you know, we, we open with Texas here in Lubbock and that's awesome. That'll be a big time game. Our guys will absolutely 100% be ready to play physically and emotionally. And uh, they'll be ready for that. And they know exactly who we start with in the Big 12. But first things first, we got to finish – us and us at Texas Tech for about another seven or nine days, and then we'll be full fledged on to Houston Baptist. Yeah, I keep I hate to keep harping on this subject matter, but I always think back to something you always said. Like you said to me, like almost the first or second week you've been here, third week, like, hey, you don't get tough. You don't get you don't get you get tough in the off season, right? You don't you're not going to become a tough football team in no, in October November, right? You you that's what you use the off season for it. Is this just another part of that, right? I mean, yeah. it'd be easy to like go, God, I can't believe where we are, but but you got to build a mental toughness to this, all yeah. of us, right? Yeah, and just to maybe expand on what you just said, I think you continue to evolve and expand on your mental toughness as the season goes. But certainly, by no means do I think it's not improved on and expanded. As I was talking, a little bit more physical right. yeah. um, and some mental, but the mental toughness I do believe is built as a as a baseline and a foundation January through August because I completely believe that it's emotional maturity it's the decisions you make off the field academic accountability weight room accountability I think for eight straight months of that you build a foundation and then I think every year you raise that 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 lower foundation and then I think as the seasons go you do expand on a mental toughness and an ability to um, handle injuries, handle an, an over a, a rash of injuries at a certain position, and then maybe this season COVID and the variables that COVID will present to us either internally in our program or externally that we face. And so we certainly know that there's challenges coming up. I think it'll reveal our emotional and mental toughness and maturity, but I also think it'll give us opportunities to expand on it. Hey, you've got some new faces out there that you guys have added, shows what you've been doing recruiting and hitting it hard, and you've added some new guys recently. Uh, how's that all looking? I mean, it, wh where's your roster now compared to a year ago? Gio, it's a more talented roster than a year ago and overall, and it's a more developed roster. I think the locker room coming back is more developed. Yeah. Our guys did a really good job in quarantine and in the volunteer stuff over the summer. A lot of guys improved their bodies, some of the returning players. Um, but I do know that the, the freshman class, uh, the transfers coming in this class this summer, we are, are uh, more talented. We're a little bit deeper, not where we need to be. Um, may have a few more coming up. We'll see. And um, so I think it's, it's constant. Recruiting's constant. Whether it's this current year and this current uh, uh, team, it's the, you know, the 2021 class. All of that um, is daily and it's constant. And roster management, I think, is 
I said it when I first took the job, it was going to be one of the biggest challenges for me because of some of the numbers, um, challenges and issues that when we first got in here, because football is a team sport, but even more than a team sport, if that's a generic statement, but it is, you need a lot of guys to win a division one football game. You need competitive depth. You need quality depth. You need very, very little attrition, which is guys leaving the program because they're unhappy or something didn't work out. And um, I think we've managed that fairly well, you know, in, in 20 months. And you know what? A year from now, especially with the new rule coming in last Friday with, that gives these uh, seniors a chance to come back if they choose to, we'll see how that happens. And everybody else is the same classification. And I think to me, and I don't mind saying this to you, it's, I think that's advantage Texas Tech. It re it's going to help me get old. And I keep saying this, I got to get old. I got to get old in this league. I got to get bigger and stronger men in the front seven on both sides of the ball. This rule will help us do that. And I know a lot of um, players already are very excited about it. That's the future. The thing that it does in the short term, Geo, is I think that is one of the best player initiatives the NCAA and the board of directors have done because what it does is it just does that for the, our players. It just relieves so much emotional and mental stress about what if. And, and it allows them to not have to play the what if game every day, every week. What if I get COVID? What if I'm out three or four weeks? What if our team doesn't play for three straight weeks because of our quarantine, we have too many? What if we have three straight opponents that can't play tech just because you're unlucky? And so guys are looking at, oh, what if I only play one or two or five games and we've already lost two? Man, when that, I just remember talking in those team meetings late last week and when that was going through and just the body language and the vibe of our players, it just rose. And it was so much better for them to, uh, to know, hey, I've got another year and I don't have to stress anything is, is um, icing on the cake this year. Hey, pretty cool this week. Uh, Xavier White gets the uh, scholarship, did it on Zoom. Uh, that was a pretty cool experience. Little, uh, a, a new way for me to award a, a scholarship. Um, we've awarded scholarships a bunch of different ways over the eight years I've been a head coach. That was certainly the 2020 <laughs> version of doing it over Zoom. But how, what a cool thing for Xavier's family, extended family, his grandpa. He's a third generation Red Raider. You know, a Lubbock family. Some of those family that were on were from out of state and, and out of the area. That was really neat. That's a that's a, a a moment in a lifetime of a family that they'll never forget. And for his grandpa to be able to award it, that's pretty pretty neat. And it's pretty uh, awesome. Was, a lot of that was Coach Smith. The Andre Smith came up with that idea, so I'll give him the credit for it. But it, yeah, that was a cool way to do it. It really was. Hey, as we wrap up and all the things we've been dealing with, it and but maybe nothing. Uh, more devastating and impacting than the loss of, of Tommy McVeigh. And uh, we had the service last weekend. Uh, I've told the hundred people, I can't even imagine uh, standing out there uh, September 12th without T-Mac on the sidelines. And uh, can you even put into words how much he's meant to you in the program? I only paused to try to think of something different. All right. And not be redundant in my comments. But I also think, Gio, that's a compliment to Tommy because the best thing that you ever say about Tommy and the most consistent thing is the way he made anybody feel. And I said it in the service, you know, people don't remember what you did or what you said. They remember how you feel, how they made you feel. And, you know, Tommy made me feel like Bear Bryant every day. Um, walk in here right over this computer Give me a fist bump every day. How's my coach? Let's win today. Let's kick the blank out of somebody. You know, whatever it was, he just had that, that, um, that vibe about him. I'll never feel that down that hallway. That'll be a void, not in a negative way, but in, in absolutely a positive way. That's a void that we'll never have. Here is the roles, the many, many roles that, that, that um, he had, but – None the more important with the support from our, for our players and our coaches. What a, what a tremendous confidant for our players, our coaches, 
uh, the way he made our players feel. I, you know, the, the video, Keyshawn Carter um, talking about how he acted, you know, on game day. You know, Fry talking about he's the coolest cat I ever known, you yeah. know. But just the vibe that he gave those kids on game day, we won't replace it. Um, but we'll play in Tommy's memory, not just for for this year, but in years to come. And we're doing things around the building. His memory will always live on in this football facility. Um, from the pictures that are up to our, our helmet decals this year to to things, other things that we're doing. Um, I could talk the rest of this show about Tommy McVay and what he's meant to me. And I know certainly many of our viewers and, and Red Raider Nation and our boosters and our alumni and especially former players and former coaches that got to be around him every day. You know, I remember just stopping in his office any time and he'd always go, Gio, I love these guys. Talking about staff, he's like, these guys are the real deal. And, and I mean, he just loved you guys, loved being a part of it, loved supporting you. And um, you're right, it's going to be – physically you might replace the office, whatever, but he, he's irreplaceable as a person. And you don't say that about many people. Keith Patterson said he's the D and the T and double T, you know, um, Tommy, um, Tommy's as good as they come. I'm very fortunate and I'm the better man to be around him for the last 20 months. And uh, he's, uh, he's Mr. Red Raider. He's Texas Tech football. All right, coach. I know you got a lot of work to do. Thanks for taking some time with us. See Absolutely. you soon. So thanks again to Coach Wells. We asked the trivia question. Uh, Tyree Wilson from Texas A&M is now the third SEC transfer into the program here over the offseason. Who are the other two? Uh, they are Eric Monroe, who transferred to Texas Tech uh, from LSU, and Shadarius Townsend, who transferred to Texas Tech from the University of Alabama. We talked about uh, Townsend uh, on one of the previous uh, appearances of Coach Wells here on uh, Typical Tech. So uh, – that's uh, uh, the other two. So Tyree Wilson joins those uh, two individuals to give us three former SEC players now on the uh, Texas Tech roster. Thanks again uh, for watching today. Thanks again to Coach Wells for joining us. He has got a million things going on. So appreciate him taking the time uh, to join us uh, today. And if you're out and about, come around and look and see the students walking on campus, walking in front of your car, just being around the campus is a buzz. And nothing is more typical tech than having everyone back and back to somewhat normal as we resume uh, classes here in the fall of 2020. And again, we hope to see you all, or as many of you as we can, on the in Jones AT&T Stadium on September 12th when we open the season against Houston Baptist University. We'll be back next week on Typical Tech. I'm Robert Giovanetti. Thanks so much for joining us. It's Typical Tech. Typical Tech. It's a touchdown, Red Raiders. Fantastic. Love it. And they hail from Lubbock, Texas. That's pure Texas Tech. This season, Texas Tech is switching to all mobile ticketing. That's right. Season tickets, mini plans, and single game tickets for all Texas Tech football, men's basketball, women's basketball, and baseball events are now mobile. So what does this mean for you? Convenience. Because your tickets will be stored on your mobile device. You no longer need to worry about receiving or printing physical copies of your tickets. This new process eliminates the need to coordinate meeting times for ticket distribution by allowing you the flexibility of easily transferring your tickets from your mobile device to the personal device of friends or family. So arriving to the game at different times is no longer a problem. Eliminating the cost of printing physical tickets allows us to put more resources into enhancing both the student athlete and fan experience. Prior to arriving to the stadium on game day, be sure to check your Apple Passbook or Google Pay and confirm tickets have been added. On game days, all you'll need is your phone, your physical parking pass, and of course, that Raider Power Spirit. If you have any questions, feel free to contact support in the Texas Tech Ticket Office at 806-742-TECH or visit texastech.com slash mobile ticketing.